like those screens going? I do, yeah. Wow, your set, your voice sounds good. That's what this thing is. Damn. Yep, Blue Yeti. It's worth every penny. I've heard of Blue Yeti, yeah. It's a good yeah. dancer mic, right? Yeah, it's pretty solid. I got one of them for music. Nice, 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 nice. I never thought to use it for this. Oh, yeah. No, this is the only thing. <laughs> if I was at all musically inclined, that'd be a different story. But, uh, yeah, no, this is all for uh, all for the show. So, And this is live, right? Yeah, it's live. So we're. Uh, I'm going to get, at some point, we've got to figure out, Seth's been all over me. We got to figure out LinkedIn Live for this because we've got LinkedIn. We were approved for LinkedIn Live, which is awesome. I don't even know what that is. So LinkedIn Live is a service LinkedIn provides that uh, they're in beta with that allows you to essentially just go live. So you go live and it announces to your entire audience and then they can just tune in live to your, it's essentially like, just like what we have going on here, but it's done through LinkedIn. I don't know all the details. I'm meeting with our rep uh, this week to understand like the nuances of how it works, but essentially it's like their platform for live streaming. So uh, integrated within LinkedIn. So we'll be um, checking that out because I think it exponentially allows more people to get access to it. Yeah. Yeah. I tried uh, last night was a Willie Nelson show on, Facebook, that thing was terrible. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like I couldn't even cast it. I couldn't even get it to sync up. I don't know what was wrong there. Was it your connection or was it the... Uh... It shouldn't have been. Interesting. This is your yeah. home digs. I've never seen this before. Yeah, well... <laughs> I like this it. side I can't show anybody because it's all some of my art. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Do not put that on camera, please. No, no, uh, no, no, no. Even though it's awesome. But there's um, six guitars over here. There's a drum set right back there. I have a wife breaking and good thing I'm not recording there, huh? No, I'm good. Jesus <laughs> Christ. You could do the, uh, you could do, uh, I don't know how much Zoom you've been doing recently. Are you guys using Zoom or a different uh, product? Yeah, we switched to Zoom about three weeks ago we oh have you season. gotten into have you gotten into your your the virtual backgrounds. bathrooms yet yeah fucked with those a lot oh here's a nice one since she just creeped in on you yeah that's great oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> she does it to me all the time i'm like don't ever come in with that door uh and of course boom yeah no a robe one time for SEO. <laughs> 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 that's awesome uh i've got hold on a second uh, the the virtual ones are pretty cool too if you haven't used the um the video like yeah i put in a a whole uh <laughs> i downloaded like the fight scene from civil war from marvel civil war and put that on behind me and everyone's I'm like what the fuck are you doing you idiot oh my god yeah you know what um Tim Tim Brown, who's actually a, a guest on the show a little while back, did um, some Zoom hacks. Like, there's some cool, hey, merch. Um, so, uh, and always a cat's butt, always. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a, he was showing tips and tricks, and um, it's funny. He took a photo of himself creeping around a corner, and so he's got a photo of himself, like, right over here. It's funny, when I was talking to, uh, we had Greg Gifford on the show uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. I don't know. It all blends. And Greg was saying he wants to do like a video, like see how long the loop goes for and do a video where he just pops his head up from like the corner down here and just like looks and then goes back to not looking so that he's just sitting there having like a conversation with a normal background. It seems, yeah, yeah. but then he just pops into his own background. <laughs> which I think would be amazing. I'm like, I'm like, Greg, can I get that one of you popping into my background? Because I think that would be even better. I know uh, there's a way that this, and I haven't figured it out yet, but like, it'll know if you've actually taken focus off the window and gone on to something else. So <laughs> that's good. So if somebody's yeah. not paying attention, you can tell. <laughs> I like that trick. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's, you know what? I get the, I get the responses after the meeting and it never shows that it always says a hundred percent for everybody. So I know that's impossible. So I don't know if they really, if zoom's feature for that really works. 
Oh. I have a feeling they're probably trying to fix a lot of other crap <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know what's probably happening? Skype's probably going, what the fuck just happened? Like, where, when did we become obsolete? Yeah, I mean, Skype, it feels like Skype hasn't even been part of the, the freaking vernacular right now. Like, right. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Like, it just goes straight FaceTime. Then it was Hangouts. Which, by the way, could Hangouts rename or rebrand or whatever have been at a worse time? Yeah, like, right. um, and then and then Zoom just like it was like WebEx never existed, GoToMeeting never existed, right? Like these things just got obliterated by Zoom. Yeah, Zoom I, is, I don't understand why, but they did. Zoom is the toilet paper of video conferencing. Is that what it is? You I, just want to hoard it. It's the go-to, right? It's like- well, no, actually, go-to is the go-to merch. <laughs> Technically, go-to <laughs> meeting is in fact the go-to of meetings, but Zoom oh. just is. Yeah. Hey, Pat. Hey, guys. What's Michael, up? welcome. Hey, Pat. Bill, what's up, man? Long time no see. Last time I saw hey. you was in London, Brighton. Yeah, it was in Brighton. How you doing, bro? I'm living the dream. I hear you. Same here, you know, stuck in my upstairs spare bedroom, listening to terrible weather, hit against my windows on Long Island. It's a good oh, are you guys getting walloped right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's starting to get bad here. It's supposed to come through like vicious, they said, by like two o'clock. But yeah. like they said, 60 mile an hour winds, like the whole nine yards. Um, but I haven't, I'm looking out my window, I haven't seen anything really yet. I was, again, I'm, I'm rooting for bad weather. I shouldn't, but I am. I'm like anything to keep people inside. Like, let's get a snowstorm going. Yeah, it could let's happen. Go. Let's go. Weather's... Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like the weather that like is harmful to people, but bad enough that you don't want to go outside. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Everyone stay inside. We're good. We'll stay safe. You know, luckily roofs over our heads. We could be thankful and grateful for that. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know what? People will be slowly coming on. I figure um, we'll give it one more minute and then we'll kick off. Yeah, that works. All right. Stefan, your voice is so buttery and smooth. Uh, Mm Ah, the night sounds of SEO. SEO at night. <laughs> the quiet storm. It's my new. It's my new. Uh, it's my new handle. SEO at night. SEO mm. after dark. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, SEO after dark was Bing's SMX thing. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. At the at the aquarium in Seattle. Yeah. Did you ever see that? Would you go to SMX Advanced, Bill? Yeah, I never got invited to that one. Not invited. It was like uh, everybody and their mother was invited. <laughs> it was an aquarium. Is that where dude. they did the awards? Yeah, I don't know if they did the awards. Yes, one year they did the awards there, but that was not the after dark night. One time they did SEO after dark, and it was cool. Like Bing actually put their logo, uh, a big logo, in a f- in one of the fish tanks, which I can only imagine how much you have to pay the aquarium <laughs> to do that. Um and like it was cool the whole place was pretty dark and these illuminated fish tanks and i'm like a fish fiend so for me i was like uh just oh this is the coolest thing ever but um yeah they there it's an interesting uh it was an interesting marketing event style thing to do so you know what let's kick this bad boy off yeah all right hey guys Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Search From Home. As usual, my good friend and co-host, Patrick Reinhardt. Down there, you're, you're always here for me. Always there. Yeah, you, you and I are always on top. Reinhardt, you move around. I, for some reason, am right in the same spot for you all the time. Consider all the time, me, every single day. Consider me uh, tried and true, reliable, I'm pretty you- sure it's because you own the meeting. <laughs> I'm 99% sure it's because you own the meeting. This is a debate that will go on throughout time. But something that is timeless is to my left, and that is William, otherwise known as Bill, Seabold. Uh, amazing 
um, uh, general, are you the general manager, the partner manager of Green Lane? Yeah, managing partner. That's managing go partner. With. I got it wrong. Of Green Lane, which is an awesome agency based out of North. Is it north of Philadelphia or close to Philadelphia? You're like touching Philadelphia. Yeah, right, right the outskirts. The the town is called uh, town has six different names. Pennsylvania <laughs> can't get it together. So We're how either do you optimize called, for that. <laughs> I, <laughs> We actually, <laughs> we, we, we looked at Google Maps. Google Maps says we're in Eagleville. So we're just like, we're in Eagleville. That's where we are. But they call us Eagleville, Norristown, Oaks, uh, Autobahn. I think there's even one other. But we're really right outside of King of Prussia, which is just touching Philadelphia. And Bill is a good friend. I've been lucky to call him a friend for many years. An amazing marketer. Um, phenomenal uh, leader of teams and uh a hacker to a degree in his own right. I don't think he'll take that title, but I think he deserves it in his, uh, in his concoctions. We always t tend to, when Pat, Bill and I get together, whether it's over beers with these cans on for, you know, uh, search on tap, which was our traditional uh, SEO podcast or any other time we get together, it usually ends up all about conspiracy theories. So uh, <laughs> I have no doubt we'll go down some rabbit holes today. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Bill. Uh, give a little introduction beyond what I've just told about yourself in Green Lane, and we'll get started. I, I, look, if I knew it was going to be like that, I would have brought the tequila here. I didn't realize it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was search on tap. Uh, yeah, I've been doing uh, SEO for a long time. I started in 1996. I fell in love with SEO even before I knew it was called SEO. It was the old story I tell and it just stuck with it. So Green Lane is a, um, Green Lane used to be my, uh, my sole proprietorship side gig, decided in about 2012 to restart it as an agency, brought in a bunch of people from a company that was right outside of Philadelphia called GSI Commerce. So I thought, you know, if we got all these really great people, why don't I just expand this thing into an agency and try to do, um, search marketing a little bit more, uh, make it a little bit more data driven, make it a little bit more strategy, strategy driven. Um, you know, so we're, we're a small team. We're a team of 15. We're really focused on solving some of those big problems. Um, you know, so every day with us is, is usually some kind of different, um, you know, really some kind of different SEO struggle that sometimes falls out of the normal SEO uh, hey, I got a little indexing problem, but sometimes we're like, we're struggling with trying to fix conversion rate optimization issues and all types of things like that. So our view of SEO is a lot bigger than I know it used to be when I got into this field. Um, you know, we, we do, we do pretty much everything under search marketing. We do a ton of PPC and everything. We'd like to mix it all together. So even when we're talking about SEO with somebody, we're really talking about everything that we can, uh, everything that we're good at, uh, you know, under our roof at GreenLane. Awesome. I, uh, I've witnessed uh, some of their work and, and have to say it's, it's phenomenal. Not here as a sales pitch by any means, but uh, I, I do vouch for these guys and, and Bill's team. So uh, for whatever that's worth, okay. I uh, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Cause you know, there's been a lot of stuff going on, but first and foremost, let's just take care of the personal upfront. How are you handling this whole COVID craziness and, and being cooped up? And I know you got to, I've seen your house on Facebook. You've got, you've got a nice place, dude. You got some space to, to kind of space. I'm comparing that now, by the way, to my, you know, less than a thousand square foot apartment in New York city. So, uh, but you've, you've definitely got some, some space to, to be out there and, and not always be cooped up. How are you passing the time? Personally, I'm, I'm going insane because I'm a hyper extrovert and thank you for the nice comment on the house, but I, I feel like it needs to be even bigger. It needs to be the entire size of this County for me to be happy because, I, <laughs> cause I just miss human interaction. Uh, still trying to get used to this whole zoom thing and trying to get used to talking to people through a computer. Uh, it's just never been something I'm, I'm, I'm happy with. I miss hugging which is, you. Which is why we always text and, and I don't do phones because I just can't, <laughs> I can't get into talking through machines like this. Well, we're going to make you feel awkward and talk for the next uh, couple of minutes. <laughs> the so, camera's yeah, over I mean, here, Bill. The camera's yeah, over here. Yeah, so, Bill, it's funny, you know, a lot, a lot of people have had kind of the opposite 
um, you know, feeling like that, right? Like I'm, I'm like you, I, you know, I, the Zoom thing is fine, you know, I'm fine with it, but it's not my preferred form of interaction. You know, I like, I'm always bumping around the office, talking to people face to face, you know, things of that nature. The Zoom thing is dragging on me as well. You know, I'm, I feel like, I feel very disconnected. Like I'm out in the suburbs on Long Island and it's, yeah, I'm going nuts too. Uh, but for the for, for a lot of other folks are saying that they actually enjoy it and i'm and i'm wondering like how many of them are going to ask to almost permanently work from home or uh you know or at least increase the amount of work from home have you seen that at all with any of any of your folks or just anything that you've seen in other companies where people are are you know preferring this this form of work yeah i think my team is really getting comfortable with this so the way that we work we work three days in the office and two days at home anyway so mm -hmm. when this happened, we decided we're going to, you know, work from home and we're going to stay home until we, we know it's totally safe. Even if they open up, you know, everything, we, we're not going back until it's totally safe because this mm -hmm. does work. Yep. Um, even though I'm old and not used to it, you know, everybody else seems to be pretty okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's something that's not old, dude. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> you're, 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 you're giving yourself a little too, too much in the age category, but yeah, no, I mean, so you guys were already having kind of remote work life balance. It sounds like most of the stuff that we did on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of frenetic. Sometimes it was a little bit like, let's all get this face time together. Let's, you know, really get that kind of uh, camaraderie and, and teamwork out of the way. Um, and then Thursday and Friday was heads down. Let's really, you know, work on just the stuff that we've set up for the beginning of the week. Well, now it's just sort of a blend of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday, you know, you know, we're just, we're just getting used to it and it's yeah. still working. It's fine. So far it's been working really well. How's, uh, how have your clients been uh, yeah. interacting with them through this method? Um, well, some are a little bit more silent than others. Some are still trying to sort it out. Um, we did pretty well with, uh, with our, with our client base, you know, we've definitely had a few shut off. Um, but yeah, some are, some are still it's business as usual and, you know, we can't ignore the fact that all this is happening, but we're, we're driving through and they seem to be okay. They, you know, they seem to be okay with this form of, of communication because it's really not that different than what we were totally doing before. Got it. Yeah. Now you've been tinkering as you tend to do. Yeah, you called me a hacker. I'd say hacky. Okay. But, uh... well, better than a hack, right? Like, <laughs> so, I mean, you, you've definitely been, you've definitely been messing around with some stuff. Uh, not just recently in general, you're always messing around with stuff which I admire because um, you have more technical prowess than I do. Um, so talk to us a little bit. I know you've been doing some stuff uh, around site colon site operator stuff. I thought that was quite interesting recently. So oh, maybe, I wrote an article. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could geek out about, uh, about that for a little bit. Was that on LinkedIn or medium? I forget. I think it was medium. Um, I think it was medium. I think it was medium. Okay. Well, I can tell the story uh, and then, so, <laughs> there actually should be a revision because I got yelled at in Twitter because I missed some points. But um, my, my uh, response was, all right, I'll update it. I'll just link to this tweet because I'm that lazy. So I still have to do that. Um, so we had a site. It used to be called, when we got started, I was mentioning that we were really focused on SEO. So my website was called greenlaneseo.com. We're now greenlanemarketing.com because it doesn't make sense to just say SEO when you do all the things under search marketing. So we said, okay, we're going to follow the best practices. We're going to get this new domain. We've got this new website. We're going to redirect everything over. 301 redirects. We're following uh, the, the rules by the book. Um, and then I expected within a couple of weeks, you wouldn't see greenlaneseo.com in the index anymore. And a couple more weeks went by, and I said, oh, something's wrong here. I'm an SEO. And I should know this, so I'm, I, I'll keep thinking about it. I'm not going to expose myself as being a fraud who doesn't know how to solve this simple issue. Three years went by and I still haven't solved the issue. And I said, okay, <laughs> every time well, the page, I do. The pages, in all fairness, the pages were redirecting. So everything was put in place properly, right? You did 301s and moved yeah. everything over. With 301s, you're saying permanent redirect. The old legacy URLs should have been taken out of the index. And a big thing, you know, that we focus on is, is um, you know, having a good organized index. That's what Google wants. They just want to know what pages are important. So when I kept seeing these other pages showing up, I thought, well, that's, you know, that's a little bit uh, duplicate content, I guess, in, in, the, in the fact that some of the URLs are the same. But even though everything redirects, why the hell, Google, are you still keeping this in there? Um, and, and the way I was seeing it, to be fair, is I was just doing the old site column. 
right? Mm -hmm. We know when you do the site colon operator or the link operator, I don't even know if that one still works, but you know, they were, there were a bunch of them back in the day, uh, only a few now. We've always known that these things have been a little froggy, right? They've always been a little buggy. So got to keep that in mind for this story. So I was doing the site colon operator and I'm seeing all the green lane SEO site uh, uh, URLs and they're all redirected when I click them and it goes to the right page. So I put a tweet out uh, to John Mueller and I said, Hey man, what's going on here? Why is this happening? I'm, I'm admitting I'm failing here. I don't know what I'm doing. And his response back was, Oh yeah, you know, you shouldn't use the site operator for debugging. I said, I, I know, I know, but you know, I should also shouldn't see pages that shouldn't be indexed in the index per the site operator. And his response back was, Oh yeah, sometimes for the site operator, we show pages that uh, aren't indexed, but we put them there because sometimes people might be looking for them. And I thought that was really strange. You know, if our job is to really keep the index clean and the site operator is giving us, and if we don't all know that rule, uh, then the site operator is, is put, putting us down a, a, a path that, you know, we shouldn't be going down. So these last three years, I shouldn't have cared. Uh, so I, I wasn't aware of that. So he, he definitely uh, straightened me out on that. So it got me thinking like, well, what else, what, what does an SEO need a site colon operator for then? Because Search Console, basically, if you want information about indexation, Search Console is the best option. Um, and that was really where I ended that. I'm like, site operator is just this kind of buggy thing. I, I, I still think it's kind of weird that they would put GreenLane SEO in the site operator if it's not actually indexed. But um, I'll breathe there. I'll take a breath there. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess hold on a second. So uh, yeah, there's two questions come to mind immediately. One, were you trying to um, – were you putting in – and I'm assuming you were, but whatever you were taking the, your original URLs, maybe the homepage and others and throwing them in for not re-inclusion, but recrawl uh, via webmaster tools, mm -hmm. just so that obviously like Google would come back through and recognize. Uh, I don't think you could do that with someone else's site. You can only do it with your own in there. I love that you said webmaster tools. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's all. I'm, I'm still going to call it that. I'm sorry. Uh, like I'm still stuck on the old school way of, we're dealing in old school. If we're going to deal about site colons, I'm going to call it <laughs> webmaster tools. <laughs> deal. Um, Sounds good. But like the, I guess the other question is, did you try taking the old URL, throwing it into the search results to see if that page was being indexed without it being found via site colon? No, that's where I failed. So I was just looking at site colon. I wasn't trying to force it any other way out of Google. You know, because if you did it the other way, would you find it or you wouldn't find it? I looked after I wrote John and I couldn't find it. So that doesn't I, make any sense. Why would, why would, what's the purpose of site colon if it's not going to pull back? I know it's not perfect, but what's the purpose of site colon then? In what what world, I, have, need... I mean, you could argue that the site, you know, the, the site operators, you know, I don't think that, you know, Google, like, you know, uh, Bill, to your point, I think, you know, they're, they're very buggy and they, they don't pull back you know, super reliable data. But I agree that if you see, like they shouldn't show anything that isn't in there. You know, I don't, under, I don't understand why, why Mueller told you that. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that doesn't said, seem to be a practical purpose. Yeah, they, just, I don't get that. John even said, he goes, we call them alternate URLs. And I was, I never heard of alternate URLs. Yeah. And uh, did you use the URL inspection tool at all just to see what was going on with the specific ones you were looking for? Mm -hmm. So I, I went and I reclaimed the GreenLane SEO domain. Okay. So I had to go do the whole DNS, you know, verification yep. trick. Um, and then I put it into URL inspector and it said not indexed. So site colon says it's indexed. This says it's not indexed. That's actually what prompted me to yeah. reach out and say, John, I have, I'm well, confused. I, I guess, I, I'm too simple for this. I guess it's an alternate URL. <laughs> it feels like an alternate universe in all fairness. Like I, I'm sorry. I, I still have, uh, I mess around with search operators all the time. Um, I enjoy them. I think they're a fun way to, this is they're about as close as I'm ever going to get to hacking, honestly. So it's like when I look for, like, I like to look for content sometimes that seems hidden. So I'll look for, um, I'll look for in URL dot PDF, for example. I love to look for that for clients. Um, to me, that is a prime mechanism to identify PDFs that may be ranking that um, you can then go and stick them into, you know, into products to understand if they're getting any traffic, for example, estimated traffic, of course. 
but understanding if those URLs are actually getting traffic. And if those URLs are getting traffic, I can guarantee you that traffic's not actually showing up in that person's GA or Adobe because the the pixel or the uh, the code isn't firing because you can't put it on a PDF as I understand it. So that is a ton. And I've seen like massive clients. I mean, like some of the biggest financial companies, financials are like financials and insurance, by the way, for anyone listening, number one place, if you want to find this issue, um, you will actually find their PDFs. I found it for a credit card company under their rewards keywords. And I was just dumbfounded because I'm like, people are actually looking for the credit card plus the rewards queries and a whole bunch of queries around their rewards. And they were just getting a PDF. So when you were looking to like redeem your rewards under terms about redemption, other things like that, you literally could not find, um, you would find this PDF, which is essentially a cul-de-sac or a dead end. Uh, so I find operators to be really interesting because I think you can find things that shouldn't have been exposed, like Excel files, um, uh, PowerPoint presentations, weird things like that. I think you can go look for, and I've always had fun doing that. And then I also have always found it interesting to start doing combinations of the, of the operators together to try and pull back parts or sections that I was under the impression were actually being indexed. But now you kind of rock my world with that, or at least John did via you, because I'm like, that's not how I've interpreted what I've been taught. Right. So yeah. If you're going to change it, that's fine. Just let us know. <laughs> like in the meantime, I'm still doing stuff using this and I don't know that what I've been doing is accurate. Yeah. So, um, have you, uh, have you had any more back and forth with him since? No, that was really it. Um, but that the indexation, you know, index bloat, all that stuff is still massively important. I mean, it, it's always been important. It's still such an important thing. Now, every time we do any kind of cleanup for any kind of site, big or small, you see something, there's always a correlated lift. And it makes total sense because Google wants to index the important pages. If you start giving them all sorts of things that they're going to then waste bandwidth on and decide whether they want to index it or not index it, you're still wasting their time. So when you create a, t a, a, a site that's super tight and, and can just make sure that Google's seeing the right pages, thus index the right pages, you're going to have a better experience. So we're, we're always doing work to try to clean up you know, the index we created. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the tool that we made. It's called the indexation tool mm -hmm. and it doesn't work anymore. And uh, it was great when it did. Right. So ideally with this tool, it was using uh, an API that was out there, a Google API. And we were able to paste in a bunch of URLs, which is basically a whole site crawl of important pages. And then it was able to say, okay, these are indexed or not indexed. Um, I don't know if, and I do know that, that Google knew the tool existed because I had a back and forth on Twitter, uh, with John, I said, it's not a black hat tool. Like it's a, it's a white hat tool. It's, it's to empower SEOs to do better with uh, cleaning up the index. Like it's actually- Yeah, you were giving it away for free. I mean, right? Yeah. It was, it was free tool. You yeah. guys were giving it as part of your garage, I think it was called. And you yep. just were like, here, use it's a great this. tool. Yeah, yeah, when it worked, of, yeah, when it worked, it was awesome. I use that thing all the time. It was great when it worked. And then something happened, it broke. Yeah. Um, Sean Malseed on our team who built it, he went to Tech SEO Boost and he sort of talked about how we build it. Uh, and then he came home and it was broken <laughs> a couple of weeks later. <laughs> bum, so bum, bum. Maybe that was And an the black thing. helicopter starts circling. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, then after that, you know, I might have the timing wrong. I have the timing wrong, I'm sure. But then Search Console came out with their better coverage reports or indexation reports. And it's just not as useful because you can't, you, you, you can't load up a bunch of URLs and see, you know, how you're doing. So I do feel like they, they blinded us a little bit. I think um, that was a tool they probably shouldn't have killed. And I really hope they give it back to us in some better way than the way that they've, uh, they, they have it now in Search Console. Because it's yeah. a tool that everybody who was using it um, found immediately the, the value in it. And it was, it was for Google. It was for users. It was for everybody. Yeah. So that, that's a sad loss. Does Search Console have a council? I mean, aside from the Google folks, I mean, the folks that actually are getting paid by the company that makes it, right? But do they have like, it's weird to call this, but a client advisory board or, you know, we're all technically their clients, right? In that we don't transact with them in payment, but we sure do with time. So they're trying to build a tool and this kind of gets to the love-hate relationship between SEOs and search engines, right? 
Um, they're trying to build a, a product that allows us to help them be more effective. Now, it's only as effective oftentimes as we take that information and do something with it so that they don't have crawl bloat and other things. And then they can, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship if you really think about it, right? It's the pilot fish and the shark. And I've talked about this before. The concept that they're the shark and we're the pilot fish and we clean the shark. Sometimes the shark makes a hard left and we find ourselves in open ocean. But most of the time, there's a very good relationship between these two animals. Um, you would think they want to take our feedback on that. And while, yes, feedback can be considered whoever's screaming loudest or where it's coming from on Twitter, but like you'd almost think that they want to sit down and have conversations with Bill and other folks in our industry to be like, okay, what can we do to make this more effective for you? We don't promise we're going to do it because, of course, they wouldn't do that. They have their own agendas, and I don't blame them for that. They, they only want to give away so much. But why wouldn't they do that? I mean, am I naive? Is this the moment where we just sit around saying, Bajayo doesn't know what the hell he's talking about? About 10 yeah. years ago, I somehow yeah. found my way in, uh, in Google, into Google in New York. And I remember being in there and going around the room and everybody who was invited in for this particular meeting. And I'm like, yeah, I'm an SEO. I mean, the looks they gave me was, how the hell did you get in here? And it was the most <laughs> uncomfortable rest of the day. <laughs> so, and yeah. no one talked around Bill for the rest of the day. Oh, I was all by myself. I, was like, I just can't wait to go see that kitchen, see that yeah. restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think, I mean, but they've been better to the, you know, with the SEO community over the last few years, I think. You know, I think like John, Gary, and Danny do a good job of, you know, kind of talking. They actually, you know, like search liaison being created, I think was a big step forward for everyone. Uh, you know, being able to actually contact them and have someone write you back, uh, you know, like, you know, anyone. And I think like, like John doing the, uh, uh, what, does he do Christmas Eve or Christmas day when he does the, uh, when he answers people's questions, like you can just go and just ask him something. So, I mean, like. I mean, and John speaks more. at conferences too, Pat. I mean, I never saw, I hardly saw Matt ever speak at a conference, not as much as John does, I feel like. Am I wrong yeah. in that respect? No, I think Matt was out there. He was out there at conferences, I think mainly at the, at the big ones answering questions. But, but John, John does travel quite a bit. Yeah, I feel like John, for some reason, John feels more approachable to me than Matt ever did. And maybe it was because it was one person before and now it's a, more of a distributed function. But um, I definitely feel like there's been a shift in the way that, that Google's been treating us in a positive light. Yeah, I'd agree with that for sure. Yeah. What else, uh, what else, Bill, have you been tinkering with recently? I know you've been messing around with some stuff. Uh, well, we have other tools that we're working on that are going to come out and I hope they're going to be really cool. Um, can't tell you what those are yet, <laughs> but otherwise, you know, it's been, it's been this COVID stuff. It's really, you know, we, we're, we're, I've been spending a ton of time just making sure everybody's okay and, and you know, everybody's uh, getting by. That's really where my head's been the last, I, that's where everybody's head has been the last couple of months. So mm -hmm. I got to get back to my tinkering. Yeah. To my tinker I mean, toys. And, yeah. I mean, and it, it's interesting because we, we had Seth on yesterday and he was kind of talking about, you know, like, you know, leading, you know, leading through this, you know what I mean? Because there's, you know, kind of turn the world upside down. Uh, and I think, you know, leaders have uh, a tough job. I mean, everyone has a tough job right now, but I think just for companies like leaders such as yourself also have a tough job, just keeping people positive, keeping people forward moving. What is, what has been a few things that you've been you know, trying to kind of imbue in your team, uh, you know, knowing that you guys already had kind of a remote thing built in, but, you know, just like about what's going on in the world, just to keep everyone like, Hey, things are okay. We're going to get to the other side of this. What's, what's the type of things that Greenlane have been doing? We do every morning, we do our version of a stand up, right? Of a, of a scrum. <clears throat> and it was, you knew it, it could be, uh, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We, we did our own version of it. Um, now it's been like an hour every morning. It's just, you know, let's just talk. How's everybody yeah. feeling? You know, what did you read today? What, did, what are you, what are you afraid of? Like we, we've, we've really, and we just had this conversation yesterday. So it's fresh. I mean, we were talking to each other, like we really are closer to each other and we are so much more of a family than we've ever been before. And it's, mm -hmm. that's, I loved it. I've never in my life had a job like this. I mean, I'm proud to be part of this company and I'm proud of all the people there. And we all come from different walks of life and, you know, different opinions, but we're all like really close now. And we're all, we all have each other's back in a way that 
we've been pretty close before with different, you know, iterations of team members, but this version right now, like I'm glad everybody is, is part of this team now because uh, they've helped me so much and I hope I've helped them. I hope I've given them some, you know, guidance and wisdom that I've experienced just because I'm an old guy in the industry and, you know, we're all just sort of figuring it out together. No egos. It, it's hard to be a leader and be like, I'm going to come in and say the right thing and, and save the day. And it's like, shit, I don't know the right thing. This is crazy. So, you know, we're all just kind of figuring it out together on those, those hour, hour plus calls. And then at the end of the week, um, Friday, we do a, uh, a happy hour at four o'clock and we just hang on for like an hour or two and just some people drink, some people don't drink, just shoot the shit, talk about yeah. Tiger King and whatever the hell. <laughs> you know, can take our minds off uh, <laughs> of real life. Yeah, no, it's interesting. And I think that's what a lot a lot of these, uh, you know, because at first everything was like, hey, let's do a stand up to see what's going on in the day, what you're working on. Um, and, uh, it, and most of them have evolved into, I mean, the first week that was fine. And everyone was just like, yep, this is what I'm working on. Okay, cool. You touch base. Uh, but I've noticed that with my teams that most of them have turned into just like an hour long, like hangout, like just to say, hey, what's up? How you guys doing? You know, and then everyone just kind of blown off steam at the end of the day. And then, you know, towards the end of the week turns more into, you know, just a happy hour just to talk about what's everyone doing on the weekend, you know, on the weekend, even though you're doing this, even though Saturdays feel like Wednesdays and, and no one really knows what day it is anymore. Uh, so I think, and I'm hearing that around a lot of different companies too. It's just that people want to, it's more about the connection than, you know, like everyone, like, you know, you trust your folks to do their work, you know what I mean? But like the, the touch points and the meetings have more turned into about connection and, uh, and, and continuing to be close to your team rather than, Hey, what am I working on today? Yeah, we do team building exercises. We have um, all hands meetings that we do once a month. We do team building. This is like amazing team building just sort yeah. of organically coming out of this, this awful virus stuff. Yeah. So there's a silver yeah. lining there. There's yeah. something about, there's something about everybody being in the same situation. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter. Like you said, the age or we're all kind of to a degree in the same thing. And I was thinking about it last night. Most, most uh, trauma or uh, traumatic events or life shifts happen fairly quickly. They don't happen in slow motion. This one is happening in slow motion. So your ability to reflect while it's actually happening is this unique, crazy, warped, like it, I hate to bring up, you know, uh, some, some, some bad things like, you know, 9-11, it was horrible, but it happened fairly quickly. And yes, there was an aftermath in New York. You know, we know that more than anyone, but, uh, and there was in DC and in Pennsylvania, but these things were, were fairly, instantaneous uh same with katrina katrina happened over the span of about a week well the actual event itself was a day then a week in total and then the aftermath lingered for a really long time sandy superstorm sandy same situation but like the ability to be living through the constant of it and be in that moment of it happening it's like taking that one moment and then just stretching it out and i feel like we're all kind of stuck in that stretch so yeah. it's weird when you think about what that's like for people to process and, and, and we're all in the same warped world going like, what the hell is going on? You know, and it's affecting everyone differently too. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed this, but like, you know, certain people it's affecting their, them personally and they're feeling anxiety and they're feeling a lot of stuff. Others it's impacting their relationships. Obviously um, there's a lot of different things that it's there. So being there for your team, I think, is a huge um, is a huge thing, Bill. Um, also, throw out the idea. I don't know. Do you guys use anything for your like one on ones to structure them? Mm -hmm. We use yep. fifteen five personally. I don't know if you've ever used that product, but not to hawk a product, but just throwing it out there. Amazing. I found that product to be really, really good. Like I'd actually before when before this the pandemic, I was like, ah, eh, it's all right. But then once we started like needing to structure because you wouldn't necessarily be with each other. I mean, you guys might've been different because you already had a, a partial work from home, but we definitely did not have as much a work from home kind of situation. And I have found the reliance on this product to be able to like have a productive conversation um, with your manager and say, these are the things I'm working on. Here's how I'm working on them. I don't know. Do you guys use Asana or one of the task management tools or what do you guys do? Yeah, we use Basecamp, but for the one-on-ones, um, I mean, we just do, I'm going to have to look at 
fifteen five. Do you have an affiliate link for me? No, I'll go no, check them out. no, no, no. I don't. I don't. Great. It's a great. I don't. It's a great way to do uh, to keep track of one on ones and and just like performance overall. It's, it's been it's been really good for us and just kind of get like a temperature check for folks from week to week. Yeah, don't don't get freaked out. I promise you, it's not related to us whatsoever. <laughs> not that that would be a bad thing. I'm just saying. But the guy that actually was their first sales guy came from our company. So when he set up their first sales demo account, it had pictures of all the old conductors <laughs> in the demo for like, oh, you know, it's Seth Gudertnik, you know, like, or <laughs> Stefan Gagayo. And it's like, it's still got my picture, right? And so I, I feel like he might have missed us and he was just trying to like, virtually play office with <laughs> that's cool anyway yeah so he so when they ran the demo for us we're like mm, this looks very uh true to life here except it's a little off yeah. so yeah um but i found that to be really effective for one-on-ones and uh and which can be very discombobulated if you let them get too crazy because there's so much to talk about that's personal and other things so it's been helpful to kind of rein it in one of the things that, that I think has been great for us is uh, Slack, right? Slack, if you use Slack right, it's not just a, and believe me, we have those Slack channels that are, we have one called fun stuff. I mean, it just goes off the rails, you know, but yeah. a lot of the, the other Slack functions allow you to have that, that stream of uh, uh, feedback pretty easily, but then the add-ons are pretty good. So we started to use this, um, uh, again, no, no affiliate link for them, but they're, they're called uh, Office Vibe and there's, a ton like that. They're basically, they're questions that go out to your team via Slack and you can write the questions. You can say like, how are you feeling? Like, tell us what you really think. And we put that through Slack about a year and a half ago and it's anonymous by the way. Um, and I can't believe how much came back to me that I would have never otherwise heard. Like we had a little bit of a disconnect between leadership and between some of the team on the floor um, that I wasn't aware of, but as stuff was coming in, I was like, these are problems. Like we have to address these and we have to start opening up and, and being a little bit more candid with each other. We're only 15 people. We can solve all this ourselves yeah. without divisions. Um, and that happened right away from that anonymous you know, tool. So I think, you know, we still use that today. Um, I'm glad to say it's really cool. you know, coming back positive, but the negative, like we just had to field it. And I spent a good six months taking all the negatives that came in and making some serious policy changes and changes to the handbook and changes to just behavior to make everybody feel like we were all in this together and everybody was equal. So yeah, that, that was a cool app in Slack. That's really cool. I never even heard that's of it. Cool. Pat, have you heard of that before? No, no, that's cool. We're looking into that. That's cool. Yeah, little little Slack bots. I never thought about the idea that like there are a whole bunch of add-ons for Slack. Oh yeah, that can do some really cool things. Um, and now that it's Slack's become like the, I want to say the modus operandi of so many companies. Um, you know, I think these third-party like add-ons can do a big difference to something that's already like people are fairly comfortable with. You know, yeah. it took me a while to get comfortable with Slack. You want to talk about the old man? Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out when you Slack something versus email something versus text someone versus, and it's become a little bit harder now because you don't go up to someone's desk anymore. That's, that's, that's done, right? That's, that's off the table. So now it becomes like, well, what are the levels of urgency and what do you use when for, for how, or, you know, and I think you are sharing your screen or someone, Not I. Screen. someone is sharing their screen. That's the first time that's happened. It is Harris. The Harris. You know what we had once? We had a, a, a robocall <laughs> jump. We had, okay. a, we had a robocall jump Turned into up. our Zoom one time. All of a oh, sudden, really? this person dialed in, just, you know, a random dialer and started selling us some shit. Oh, oh that's man. fun. That is a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I know that's the that's the risk with Zoom. Uh, we've We've talked about it and balanced it out. And, um, you know, we're thinking about a LinkedIn live version of this and I'm trying to figure out how that all works. Like we've kind of talked about before, Bill, there's a whole aspect of just trying to get this out there more and more, um, to make useful content for people. Um, so speaking of which, um, cause I think we've actually gotten into some interesting stuff regarding people management as well as some SEO stuff. Um, What's some stuff you're seeing right now, Bill, regarding like the way companies are dealing with COVID? Is there anything surprising? Is there anything that's like shocked you or, uh, or anything you think, you know, people could learn from some of the lessons you've seen? 
we're uh, nothing surprising. I mean, the, the, the clients who have paused all had legitimate reasons, you know, they weren't getting product or, uh, you know, they weren't able to, to fulfill things, you know, but you know, there's a, there's a lot of companies that haven't paused. I mean, we have been one of the lucky ones. We're, we're doing fine. Um, we're still closing business. Um, so we're, we're pretty fortunate there, but you know, yeah, I mean the local, some of the local companies have been having a, a hard go. Some, you know, there, there's only one that I can think of that said, Oh my God, this is scary. Hit pause. Um, which, you know, I get, if you're not making money, you, you, you can't spend it on, on marketing. Yeah. But if, if you are making some money, don't panic, right? Start to think about, you know, what kind of change of approach you can make here. And, you know, my specialty is SEO. While Greenlane does everything, I, you know, I'm really best with SEO. And my feeling is if you can afford it, don't shut off now. Like keep on pressing because we're going to come out unless you think the world's going to end. I don't. Unless you think the world's going to end, this is a good chance for you to sort of get caught up with yeah. SEO. So when it ends, you'll be like, yep, it's like it never happened and just keep, mm -hmm. you know, pushing forward. So we have a bunch of, uh, we have a bunch of clients that are looking at it that way as well. And that's great. Yeah. Not everybody has a luxury and, and, you know, funds to do that. But if they do, I definitely recommend keep on, don't take your foot off the gas pedal. Yeah. In fact, the other way around, I'd say like, if you can go and start, I think it's a catch up moment. I agree with you, especially if like you have the, especially that. I've been saying if there's a tech bandwidth, so if there's those parking lot projects that you couldn't get on the IT roadmap in different companies and you need to, you can finally get the bandwidth because maybe traffic's down or they don't have to worry about load balancing and a bunch of other stuff they otherwise would have had to think about, right? Yeah. Um, and you can get your project on their to-do list. Um, I'd say, yeah, there's a catch up, but I also think there's a like future thinking, right? Like, how does your business change and what's going to change on the other side of this? Yeah. I know that's like crazy to say you're going to have a crystal ball and know that, but you know, we've seen a lot of businesses evolve where they start to do things they wouldn't otherwise have done. They provide a service virtually that they didn't have. Um, I just, Oh, uh, did anyone else hear about this? Uh, the fresh direct thing. Did you guys hear about this uh, yeah. last night? Okay. So Fresh Direct made a partnership with, I think it's like National Culinary something or other. I don't know if it was National, it wasn't a school, but it was an association. And basically they're going to take chefs that are out of work and they're going to hire them to cook pre-made meals that they're now going to provide as an offering through Fresh Direct. So they're going to have their own pre-made meals, which is good for them to sell. They're going to hire these out of work restaurant chefs that are sitting around unable to do the work because maybe their restaurant doesn't do takeout or anything like that. And basically they're able to keep people employed as well as provide a new service and offering. In that case, there's a whole set of words, a whole set of stuff, you know, that I'm sure I haven't spoken to them, but I'm just assuming they would probably have to think about in order to do prefab and all the other kind of meals that, people prepared meals and all the kinds of things people are doing. So I think that's like, that's ingenious. I think it's taking a bunch of different things that are going on, recognizing now they've also been on the, on the receiving end of this in a good way. Right. Fresh direct is like everywhere and everybody, you can't even get a time slot with fresh direct. That's how many people need it. But I, I just think like, if you can get ahead of the business that way and like recognize what's coming to a degree, you can start to optimize for those opportunities and, that means on the other side of this, not only will you, you know, have caught up on work you have to do, but you'll also be ready for what's there and other people will not have gotten ready. So when people start searching this stuff, you'll be the solution. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I just, yeah. is that crazy? You guys think I'm nuts beyond what you already thought? Yeah, I think you're nuts, but I think, uh, you know, you're, you're totally right. You're totally right. I mean, some of the things that people are doing, some of the things that companies are doing, Sometimes, you know, they're, they fly under the radar and you just sort of catch it and go, well, that was really a cool marketing move. Um, you know, I think it was Burger King who, who isn't uh, charging delivery fees. So like, that's awesome. Like you took, that's going to be a little bit of a business hit, I'm sure. But they, they did a cool thing. They made a cool, smart switch. I don't like all the people who are kind of coming out and saying <laughs> like, oh yeah, we did this awesome thing. <laughs> No, I got to be careful. I don't want to start a controversy here, but <laughs> <laughs> damn it. This is better when he drinks, um, <laughs> yeah. come on. but, but there's a lot of stuff that I see that looks a little bit phony, but there's a ton of stuff that doesn't look phony at all. And that yep. stuff I'm really, you know, intrigued by, I mean, that's, there's some really altruistic things being done out there. That's not self-serving. 
That's yeah, I'll share, I'll share on the LinkedIn group the, um, there's a video. Have you guys seen this video? It's been circulating around. It's the, uh, the formula for, for a um, COVID advertising. And it basically shows you, um, I mean, I wish I could share it on here, but I'm not sure I can get the sound to work. But it's actual pure genius. Someone took the time to take like probably 17 different ads and they all follow the same formula. It's all like starts with sad music, right? And then they use the same words like together and like, and so they cut to those clips. So you just see all of these and they'll tell you what ad it's from at the bottom. And you just keep seeing all of these ads and it's very formulaic. And after a while, if you've been watching TV with ads, you're kind of like, not only is time warping, but so is advertising. Yeah. Like, I guess there's just, you know, less people advertising. So you're seeing the same ad more. And not only are you seeing the same ad more, you're seeing more people saying the same thing in their ad, even though it's for different products. So you're like, there's no ingenuity anymore. There's, there's, it doesn't feel original. It feels very, uh, I don't know. I'm starting to become immune to the marketing message of like, we're in this together. Like, I've got that. We're, we were in this together three weeks ago. Now it's, it's, it's all assumed. I get it you know, tell me a different message. And I think yeah. like, I don't know if I'm the only one getting frustrated with the marketing messages that are like, we're here for you. It always has everyone clapping, right? There'll be a shot of everyone clapping. Uh, if you guys have noticed, there's a lot of search bars in a lot of things too. Lexus has a search bar. Obviously Google has a search bar in theirs, but a lot of companies or television ads are now including search bars in them. Um, I'll share the, I'll share this ad of ads on the LinkedIn group. Cause I thought it was absolutely fascinating to see this what is you would assume they were done by the same agency because it's formulaic in its approach mm -hmm. and the way they broke it down was sick. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to see that because I sensed it too. Uh, there's something I wrote. I, I thought it was a pretty good line. Like my bank was like, we're like you, we're just like you. Oh, are you? Then you hate your bank too. You hate you guys too. <laughs> 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 but lately it's been, you know, yeah, this is, this is real. And here's what we're doing. Like we're past that initial shock. We're past that. We should be past that initial shock and past sort of that superficial fake marketing. And like, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to be going forward. That's great marketing. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm also, go ahead. I think it's a fine balance between, you know, you want to like everyone, ha you have to put something out, right? You know, we talked about this a little bit on the program before, but you also don't want to make it look, make it look like you're capitalizing on the pandemic. And I think a lot of people have made some missteps there. Um, you know, I, I've seen a bunch of ads where, you know, where people think like giving a coupon code is the greatest thing on earth. And then they pat themselves on the back for giving coupon codes. And it's like, well, some of those people can't afford this period because they just lost their job, you know? And so it's like, it's very, and I've seen some companies do great, you know, do great things, um, as well. Um, you know, so I think it's really, I think some companies are, are finding that balance. And I think some companies just are trying to do something good, but it's kind of just coming off the wrong way. Yeah. Perception is reality. I live by that phrase. You could think it's so good. You can be like, my intent was this, but people are reading it as that. Well, that's, that's life in this industry. That's life in this world. You know, so you have to think everything through. Um, but then to me, the other side is, well, don't take a month. Don't take two months. You know, we're digital. We can, we can put something out there that was mostly thought through. We could build the ship while sailing in a lot of cases. And then we can go back and say, ah, we screwed that up. And, and you can be upfront about it and not be so afraid to, to try something. So I, I think the companies that in the, in the first couple of weeks started to sort of be a little bit more uh, legitimate and honest and, and, and open, their message seemed a lot different than the first couple of weeks. You know, it seemed like the, I think I'm just now sort of repeating what you're saying there, Pat, so I don't need to keep going. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely <laughs> the same observation. I just realized I'm going down the exact same road Pat just went down. But he's yeah. doing it in a much darker room. Pat, your room is getting very dark. <laughs> it is. I know. The weather is getting much worse in here. I'm like worried for your safety at this point. <laughs> I, was just, I, I was just realizing that as the storm gets closer and closer, the room is like, getting like, darker his, and darker. Getting, I'm like, his opinion is going to be way more ominous. I know he's a positive guy, but he's in a dark room by himself. I don't um, know if you heard the hail that just started hitting my house. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. I was, just I was wondering if you guys heard the thunder that was outside mine. But, um, yeah. I love that you're both wearing hats. I can only imagine how long your hair is. Oh, oh it's God, flowing damn. locks. Oh, beautiful. Pat's got flowing locks. I've seen them. They, they just like, it's like Elsa. Let's see him, Fabio. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, right. Yeah, I would take my hat off and you'd be like, your hair is still very short, but it's, uh, you know, I'm like, 
I get my hair cut every two weeks. And uh, I'm actually, I've been, I've been texting with my barber today. Uh, he, he checks in with me. I, I was just like, hey, man, checks in with you. Like, he's just like, hey, man, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm still coming back, Raph. Don't worry about it. I'm still coming back when this is all done. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just like, I, I told my wife this morning, I'm like, she's half asleep when she wakes up. I'm like, my, my hair is the longest it's ever been. She's like, no, it's not. I'm like, no, seriously, I'm just going to go. Like now I have an excuse. I just want to see what I look like with long hair once in my life and we'll just make it this moment. And then I'm just, that's it. It's going to go right back to what it was before. Cause mm. I, I have a feeling it's not going to work very well. Um, but I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it one college try and blame it on the pandemic. So I was yeah. check. Sorry. To cut. I was trying to grow the beard. I was going to do the same thing. I was like, I want to see what I look like with a ZZ top beard. Like, right? Oh, like a legit, like you, you were going to go for the whole, cause you've always had a beard since I've known you. I yeah, feel like. but it's never been long. I'm going to put rubber bands in it and like braid it. I'm going to... <laughs> oh, Your excitement level that? over this beard makes me want you to do this. Oh yeah. When I hang little rubber bands, like Captain Lou Albano. Uh, <laughs> but the problem was it wasn't growing down. It was growing this way. Right. So uh, I can't get my thing to move over. I don't know why, but it was growing this way. So I was looking like the father from Teen Wolf. Like I wasn't looking cool. <laughs> I was looking gray and wide. And I think this ain't working. Like you could be going Captain Caveman, you know? Like yeah. <laughs> no, when you my, said, yeah, it's on camera. So I better go upstairs and start scraping some of this off. So I'm oh, trying to shape no, it up no, a little bit. Not at all. Not for us, dude. I did. I did. I will say if we're doing the grooming combo, I, I actually – trimmed down this weekend which was uh interesting uh, not interesting i just tend to rather have that done when i go to the the barber but um my wife actually did the back of my neck which was interesting too because we're like yeah you know you might have to migrate that thing upwards at some point how's that gonna go and <laughs> i'm like you know it's in your blood right your father was a hairdresser at one point and like you know your aunt is one so like technically you should know how to do this and she's like yeah with a lot of youtube help <laughs> so I don't know. It'll be very interesting to, I think this hat might be on no matter what. <laughs> it's I'm kind of what I'm getting at. <laughs> I think I'm going to bring the mullet back. Oh. Yeah. I would Maybe love a little to see tail. You, I would love to see you try to go for like the, the um, go for, and this is not just because my lineage is Egyptian, but like uh, I would like to see you go for like the, the Pharaoh, you know, like very long, <laughs> but like tight. All right. We should try to bring some hairstyles back during the, during the pandemic that are like pandemic hairstyles never to come back otherwise, but just for this moment, bolt I think cuts. that that should be, well, bolt I think, yeah, bolt you, you immediately, <laughs> that's what actually Bill texted me that he texts me, he texts me, do I need to get a bowl out so I can get a hair? <laughs> <laughs> Which was uh, pretty you got awesome. a good joke. You should use it over and over and over. And yeah. Over. Oh yeah. I'm like, if, we, if you're going to text that joke and not actually uh, use it. Oh, by the way, speaking of uh, text back and forth, just because I'm a geek, and because I've been doing it to so many people. Um, has anyone done the pew pew? Um, I know Pat was like, my my nephew did this, so I'm already like, you know, I don't know. My, I'm, I'm doing teenagers with shit on the phone, but if you actually have an iPhone and you type in P-E-W, P-E, space P-E-W, um, you'll get a nice little uh, laser situation going on with your phone, and so will the person who receives the message. I've been playing no. with iMessage. It's new. Uh, just I just stupid little about, things like that. I just learned about icing. I'm, I'm barely hanging on there. <laughs> I, mean, I think Pat was doing icing like three years ago, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah. I just learned about it. I'm like, I'm cool now. No, no, no. no that's that's over. Oh. Yeah. Can yeah, you guys I'm, give I'm, me a heads up next yeah, time a new thing the, comes? Yeah, that's one of the one of the saddest things that that ultimately died was there's nothing funnier than a good ice. Uh, and and the good thing is like if you bring it back, and you, there's always one person in the room who's like really upset about it. They're like, oh, God, is this guy really still doing this? <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, you want to explain it? I don't know uh, much about how it started, but all I know is well, that you. Go ahead. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. So, <laughs> um, so icing is the age-old art of hiding a Smirnoff ice somewhere. And then Where's this buying one? Where do you find a Smirnoff ice? Do they oh, still sell those? Oh, you can get man. They those still everywhere. sell those? Oh, you can get them everywhere. They're not like Zima. You know, Zima went way the Oh, ice. Zima went the way of the dodo, but Smirnoff ice. All right. So, uh, so basically, you hide a Smirnoff ice, and then you, like, 
wait for one of your friends or someone to find it. And when you find it, you have to chug the Shmirnoff ice. And it's like, and it started with these guys. I can't remember what college they went to. They start, they started a website called brosicingbros.com. And this was what it was. It was getting this phenomenon. And it turned into this huge phenomenon to the point that Smirnoff Ice actually had to send them a decent assist letter. And I think, I think the site's gone now. Um, let me see. Why would they send a cease and desist letter? That's like the best yeah, marketing. Yeah, that's free marketing. I mean, I didn't even know because that stuff were, was know, still they were sold. They were worried it was promoting binge drinking and stuff like that. There was a lot, you know, there was a lot that was going on there. I think, I think they may have gotten sued by somebody. I don't remember. Okay, because um, I was going to say, uh, yeah, they message to down. Smirnoff, like people drinking it, Smirnoff Ice were binge drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that is the uh, the history behind uh, behind icing. You know, there's like a Smirnoff ice in every refrigerator around the United States that's sitting way in the back that somebody's forgotten about. So, well, and they always like move past it. They're like a oh, Smirnoff ice. It's like it's like that Sunny D commercial. It's like you know, oh, orange juice, purple stuff. Oh, Sunny D, and they just move the purple stuff to the side. Yeah, it's like yeah, that's kind of what Smirnoff ice is. <laughs> this is what we've devolved to. I hope you all. I hope you all are glad you tuned in. <laughs> SEO insights. Now you know cyclones don't work, and you know how to ice someone. So I think yeah. you've all been armed properly, based on uh, on on what we've discussed today, to have a uh, a valuable rest of your pandemic. So it's been great seeing you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, any any closing remarks you want to provide us? Maybe some wisdom, some insights, things you want to share with the group, Bill. That uh, uh, just to put you more on the spot because I know how much you enjoy that. Yeah, you know, just use the time. It, it's it's in a way it's downtime. Don't take your mind off the bigger picture, but don't stop experimenting. It's SEO. That's why we're you know, a lot of us are hired to be. SEOs as uh, you know, working at an agency or as a consultant, or even if you're in-house, like part of our job is, is experimenting. You know, it's our, our job is to keep reading and learning what others are doing and then putting into practice and making sure it, it works for you. Um, nobody wants to be an SEO because you read a blog and became an SEO. You want to experiment. You want to tinker as you say. And uh, you know, yeah, this is the time to, to, to definitely double down on that. If you have the, the bandwidth. Don't give up on SEO. It ain't going anywhere. And we'll all be back to normal soon. I like that. I like, I like that. that. I think I, I think we should we should probably end on that note. So thank you guys all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Bill, thank you. So great to see your face and your facial hair as <laughs> usual. Uh, we'll have to get some drinks set up virtually for all of us as well. Uh, thank you guys all for joining us today. We'll be continuing the conversation tomorrow. Uh, Perna will be joining us uh, from Microsoft to go over some of the insights she's seeing regarding dealing with audiences. Then we have John Shahada on Thursday, getting into the publisher's role and understanding data and conversations and decision-making regarding content being created at publishers. And uh, he's from Condé Nast, great guy, uh, my Egyptian brethren. And then uh, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have, um, Rich Fagan from PC Richard uh, and Son, I should say. Uh, great uh, local, um, local-ish. I mean, they're three states, I think, right? Am I wrong, yeah, Pat? It's, three it's states. Tri-state, most of the, the Northeast. Northeast, pretty much. Uh, appliance retailer, really uh, household, I should say, an appliance retailer. Uh, 100-year-old brand, 100-plus-year-old brand. Uh, what they're doing to kind of deal with this unprecedented time and how they're how they're evolving. So uh, really interesting stuff. Stay with us. Very excited to have you all here. Stay home, stay safe, stay connected and stay with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Bye, guys. Have a great one.